sure you many times heard that an angry client will tell 10 people about it and a satisfied customer will not tell anyone about the experience. Now here's what a delighted customer will do. And you might be wondering, well, yes, this is all very nice, especially there are certain clients which are a pleasure and a delight to have. What about the other clients? What about the angry clients, the frustrated? Do you ever deal with any of those? Yes? OK. Um, I was one of those a few months ago, and I want to share the story to you, with you. So I was ha on a very intense speaking tour in the Middle East. I was flying to Bahrain. My flight got delayed. I spent the entire night sitting in a cold airport. I arrived to Bahrain 6 a.m. I had my talk that night. I was hungry, I was exhausted, and to my horror, my voice was gone. And when you're a speaker, that's a big problem. So I arrived to the hotel, 6 a.m., I'm checking in, I ask them, at what time is breakfast? And they say, 7 a.m., but you can probably get something in your room. So I'm walking to my room, and for a moment I pause and I look at the breakfast area, and as I'm like kind of peeping there, a woman comes over and she says, can I help you? And I say, well, with a thread of a voice, yes, I want breakfast, but you're closed. And she goes, no, 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 come on, come on, sit, sit. So I go and I sit there, and uh, she walks over, and I say, coffee, please. And so she smiles, goes, walks away. It takes her 12 minutes to bring me the coffee. By now, I'm in a bad mood. But now I've noticed that she's bringing the coffee, and she has this big, also a big teapot on the tray. And she says, I noticed that your voice is um, hurting. I brought you some magic tea. And I go, uh, OK. And she says, yes, this is ginger and lemon and a special tea, and it has some pepper and some magic. So I take a sip of the magic tea, and I go, mm. And she says, yes, yes, it's strong, but it will heal you. Keep on drinking. So I keep on drinking, because at na by now I am a little bit uh, yeah, skeptical, but I'm also desperate to get my voice back. As I'm walking out of the breakfast room, she comes and she says, hey, bring some more for the room. Keep on drinking, because I know you have a conference tonight. I take the tea with me, I keep on drinking, and believe it or not, my voice starts to return. That night, as I'm walking into the conference room, which could be a place like this, I see that I have everything set up for me, and I see a big teapot. And I go, oh, she had brought the teapot without me even asking. As I'm leaving the hotel, I go to the breakfast room, and she walks over me, and this is an actual photo of her, and she hands me a handwritten note, and she says, I hope your stay here was memorable. Do you think it was memorable, yes or no? Do you think I would want to go back to the hotel, yes or no? Of course. And the interesting thing here is that I'm sure you many times heard that an angry client will tell 10 people about it, and a satisfied customer will not tell anyone about the experience. Now, here's what a delighted customer will do, because I was delighted. I, you do expect good treatment in five-star hotels, but this was beyond anything I was expecting. And so what I did is I immediately posted her story on social media. I have quite a large social media following. I'm writing her story for one of my future books, which is being published in a few months. My books have been read by over a million people, and I'm here telling you about her. So when you delight a customer, you not only establish a personal connection with him or her, but you can start generating an influence and you get free promotion in the most genuine way. That is why it is so, so powerful. Let's unpack what she was doing, probably without even knowing. When you go one step beyond what a client expects, it's more than just a, a relationship on a, on a logical level. What happens here, I'm going to show you the science behind this in a very easy way. You know that just a while ago, just a few years ago, almost nothing was known about how our brain functions, especially the emotional part of the brain. It was only a few years ago that neurosci neuroscientists discovered that the emotional area of the brain is designed in a way that they call it the open loop, which in essence means all the time, if, whether we want it or not, this is not something voluntary, we're, being, we're emitting our emotions and we're capturing the emotions of people around us, even if we don't say a single word. This happens all the time. 
they call it emotional contagion or neuronal Wi-Fi. We are constantly connected. And so this is why um, emotions can be kind of tricky. And now here's a question for you. How long do you think it takes for this phenomenon of emotional contagion to occur? That is to say, in how much time two or more people who are working together, or having a conversation, share the same emotion? Any guesses? Seconds? Yes, sometimes it's immediate. Have you ever experienced that, that feeling of going to work with your best attitude and your best smile and you're super positive and in comes that client? And in a second, your good attitude is demolished. Sometimes it's instant. What science shows is that the maximum time it takes is 15 minutes. Within 15 minutes, the person who is having the strongest emotion will inevitably have the brains of the rest of the people around them, whether they want to acknowledge it or not, in the same emotional wavelength. And this is not something to scare you, which it could sound a little scary. It is to empower you because you can decide what kind of emotional frequency you generate with your clients. So that is powerful. Because if you remember that a client who feels good in your presence, who feels understood, who feels empathy and connection will want to stay with you, you can generate that on purpose. Just a few tips. An easy one, write a note, stick it next to your computer that says, delight my customers as a reminder. Another easy one, smile. Did you know that smiling is not just a friendly gesture of being polite or being nice? The moment you smile genuinely, you establish a neurological connection with the other person. And the area of the brain that is in charge of reward, the reward system, starts liberating dopamine and oxytocin, which generate trust and connection. Just a simple smile can generate that. And also, another simple trick is whenever you see a client, before even talking to them, and this even works on the phone, think something nice and positive about them. So instead of thinking, oh, here he comes again, think, that color suits him. Nice shoes. A positive thought will immediately connect to the emotional center of the brain of this other person. I'm teaching this very simple, but it's neurology. This is not psychology. Have you heard about the technique, the empty chair? Silence, no. <laughs> All right. She was probably using the empty chair technique without knowing it. This technique was popularized by Jeff Bezos, creator of, founder of Amazon. Once he was asked what made Amazon such a great company, and he said, well, we have been obsessed about delighting our customers and understanding their real needs. And the way we do this is in every meeting we have, we have all the people who are making decisions and we always put an empty chair. As a reminder, who do you think they sit in that empty chair? So they sit the most important person of all, the customer, the client. And they have this exercise where they constantly ask the chair, what do you need from us? What do you need from us? And by asking that question time and again, they came to the answer that the real need of their customer was speed of delivery. And so that's why they keep working and working on having a fast delivery. And as we speak, they still think, how can we deliver our things faster? So if you can have this as a practice, the empty chair technique, thinking, what does my client, what does my customer really need? That is really powerful.